we had a book by Laurie Beth Jones called The Path. Anybody ever been exposed to that book, The Path? Laurie Beth Jones. She's spoken in New Providence. And it, it, she speaks about the mission and vision statements, how to create mission and vision statements for your work and for your life. The one thing she said is that the mission statements are short. Okay? What is Jesus' uh, mission statement? Now 
now, adults walking down the street and they see young people doing something wrong, they quickly get in their car and they don't say that they don't get out of their soul because they now the ones afraid and not the young people. My help them. So we're going to talk about the challenge for the supervising manager of today. Today going forward. Today going forward. So I'm going to briefly discuss change. I'm not going to give you a I'm I'm going to give you a glimpse, but I'm not going to give you all of what I gave the other people in the other sessions because that was for them and this is for you. Especially for you. We're going to discuss leadership. You have to understand leadership. You must understand leadership if you're in a leadership position. We're going to identify the styles of leadership and then we're going to look at your style. What style do you use? You may use different styles at different times, but you, you don't have all the styles. You can see that there are quite a few styles. And then I'm going to define relational leadership I want to focus more on that than on anything else. Relational leadership. Discuss the fundamental characteristics, discuss the qualities of a relational leader. I want to talk briefly about emotional intelligence and social intelligence. And then I want to bring in something from a book by Stephen M. R. Covey called The Speed of Trust. This is another book if you're making notes and if you like reading, and I hope that everybody here is, is uh, an avid reader or develops a habit of reading you know, that doesn't expand your mind. And has anybody ever seen the a report on the Minnesota Nun study? Anybody here? The Minnesota Nun study was started some years ago when a researcher in that area, Minnesota, uh, noticed that these nuns who were in the 80s, 90s, and over 100, did not have any evidence of dementia. And older or same age siblings had dementia, even in the case of twins. So you have this group, subgroup of people, late in life, not demonstrating signs of dementia, and these other people that have dementia, who are related. 